Shalom, shalom, Chavarim, shalom. I just had heard this right here. I got a little clip of it. It's Fopi, right, on the Sanetta channel, um, the big leagues, and they're asking about the One West chart, you know, the Israelite chart. We have up in Q um, a vlog speaking about the Israelite, you know, the 12 tribe, what's called the 12 tribe chart. And we're going to call it and still going to use this working title, What's Correct? What's correct about the 12 tribes chart? Something to that effect about what's right, in other words, what's right, what's correct about the 12 tribes chart. Because in looking at what's correct, it's going to be obvious what's not correct. But here we were listening to, there was an African brother, I have to get his name um, right here. He's with the FOPI. Um, one of the Israelite groups out there on the YouTubes and teaching and awakening, you know, our people. And many points that we hear them making, and finally they're on the Sinetta platform. I think there was, you know, some disagreement, but they're working together to um, um, present evidence, facts concerning the, the Hebrews and the Israelites, the people of the book. And um, also taking on questions. So there was this one that had came up. Let me see if I can just share a little bit of this right here. Okay, let me see right here. It's going to begin right uh, around thank here. You for, uh, thank you guys for having me on. So uh, I'll explain the three. I'll just go ahead and start by explaining the I'm three sons here. of Noah. Now, Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, Japheth. Um, okay, right there, right there. Okay, once again, once again. Okay, so the uh, brother, for, uh, he's explaining. I hope you can hear this well. So, uh, I'll explain the three. I'll just go ahead and start by explaining the three sons of Noah. Now, Noah had three sons: Ham, Shem, Japheth. Ham is the father of the. Uh, the Hamites, which are people who uh, descend from either the Egyptians, the Libyans, the Ethiopians, uh, the Canaanites. Now, these are people in Africa. We know we know these people in Africa. We know them because we look alike. However, our uh, customs are different. Uh, there's uh, slight differences uh, uh, differences in our language. Uh, they, they come from another language family. Why we come from a different language family or group of languages? And so are you saying Ham is the father is the father of the Egyptians and Africans? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, here's the point. Okay, right there. So the first question is Ham the father of the Egyptians and Africans. That could make a good topical subject matter question right there. Are you saying Ham is Ham the father of the Egyptians and Africans? That's side net right there. I don't know how clear you can hear the voice. I'm kind of trying to like. I just took this on the vo on the handheld uh, phone recorder right here. Yes, but Africans, that's more broad than okay, hold on. Okay, okay. Let me back it up, back it up again. And so, are you saying Ham is the father is the father of the Egyptians and Africans? So, when you say Egyptians, yes, but Africans, that's more of a broad thing. Anyone, so you can you have uh, Hamitic Africans and you have Shemitic Africans. Hamitic Africans would be Africans that are people who you know have land claim. Uh, they, uh, their origins are on the continent and they happen to come from Ham. Uh, so here's the million dollar question. Okay, here's, here's the main. Hmm. Ain't no dates in the Bible to figure that out, huh, buddy? How old is Ham? We can we can find out, but off the top of my head, I can't give you an age. But that's because Africans been, been here before there was a Ham, brother. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Okay, okay, okay. Right there, right there, right there. That's Fopi. Okay, so so what Sarnetta says, he says that um, Egyptians or um. Egyptians, as he calls them, <laughs> sometimes he doesn't really get the point. I hear some of the guests actually kind of touching on it. It was like the point that I think um, his wife, uh, Nepal Shaddai, she had asked about the um, Zilpah and Bilha, um, 
the two mothers, two other mothers of the 12 tribes. There was Rachel and Leah and Zilpah and Bilhah. And so Nepal Shaddai, she, she asked a question about, okay, well, well, bond, she, she calls them bond, bond servants, bond maids. They're not bond maids, they're actually handmaids. And so what's confused there is like the bond servants, speaking of Hagar. Hagar came out of Mitzrayim or Kemet with Abraham and that whole incident that happened. So she was a kind of came from that bond, you know, maid to being a kind of a handmaid, you know, on that level. But essentially she was a bond maid. But there was a confusion right there and some thought, sought to answer the question. I said the easy answer would have been to go to the script and use and make the difference between a bond servant is different than, say, a handmaid and like the different kind of employees, and people coming into service or employ can come in in different ways. Like you can work for different kind of employers. Some employers can treat you virtually like a slave. While some employers, it's almost like your best friend, but you still work for them, you know? So there's those differences there, but the script makes a difference there. So it's about reading comprehension and also listening comprehension. But on the question, Sarnetta poses this as a million dollar question. Right? A million dollar question. Let's see if we can just back this up a little bit right here and just go into this. Okay. Hey, I'll teach you that in the Bible, huh, buddy? You're being funny, right? There you go. Ain't no dates in the Bible to figure that out, huh, buddy? How old is him? He was on the buddy, the buddy, the buddy thing, and he was good that he come backed up off of that. Him? He asked, "How old was Ham?" Now we we would like him to ask. Hey, I'll teach you that in the Bible, okay. Buddy. So, so he asked a, a presenter is presenting a brother, a Yoruba brother, uh, Israelite brother, we can say from Africa. He's presenting. Yeah, he's presenting his, 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 so Sada thinks he has, you know, a gotcha, a gotcha question. To be 100, keep it 100 and from an objective perspective, I kind of like those questions, even though you know that there's some, um, you know, cleverness, craftiness, or as he says, uh, master chess playerness in his question. So he's like, oh, the Bible don't teach you that, buddy, you know, because Africa and Egypt is older than, you know, Africa and Egypt is not older than Ham, Ham. We talk about, if we talk about Ham in the Bible, Ham, Egypt and Africa is not older. So which one is older? Is the, the Bible and the terminologies used in the Bible is older than the terminology we use today because in the Bible, the translation, the King James Version is 1611 and that's where you find terminologies like Egypt. That's where we find, well, we don't even find the terminology Africa because Africa, that's why I had this as a still right here. You might know what this is from. This is from the Berlin, the Belgium, <laughs> the Belgium. I keep calling Berlin, but the Belgium conference of the 1800s. This is where Right, the so-called European or the white man, not only did he carve up the continent, let's call it the continent. It was the continent. Even the white man in his own um, conversations and dialogue with each other, if you read some of the papers that they wrote and communi communiques and everything, they basically make it clear that he was talking about the continent, the continent, the continent. The white man called the continent Africa around the same time as the Belgium conference where he divided and conquered Africa, the divide and conquer strategy, we divided and conquered Africa. He renamed the continent, right? And by invasion and by, we could say, um, witchcraft through his counterfeit Christianity, right? By way of brutality, by way of enslavement, by way of all of, we could say, the tricks of the devil, basically. Just speaking to ones who might understand the context I'm using that 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 um byword you know this is how the white man was able to superimpose my right, onto the content this term of afrique because the real roots of the continent we'll know if we go back to the origin of africa being first associated with the continent and go back to roman times and that was tunisia once like sarnetta he hasn't really gotten that yet maybe ones need to do a presentation where the continent right became known as africa because of the white man in other words it's the white man who has given out we're talking about black consciousness and and knowing the truth so we have to put this into context yes we use the terminology africa today yes we use it and we say africans today right but we need to 
understand and even overstand where this terminology, you know, how this terminology got superimposed on not just the landmass, but also the terminology of Africans, this, this nomenclature, this name. This name is a byword. Even the name Africa is a byword. It's like when black people were called, or you know, niggas, right? Negroes and niggas and coloreds. This is also a byword as well. It's like we say about white folks. We say we call them white folks. You know, white people. That's just a byword there too. It's like a placeholder for something else. Well, this one is so-called, you know, English, and this one is so-called French. This one's from Germany. This one is Belgium, right? Like in the Belgium Conference. So, which one is older? Well, ham, which comes down to us in the KJV or through the KJV language of ham, right? And it's true enunciation, ham, ham, and then we have kam or chem, chem, chemet. You see, you, you see the link right there? So when we look at the Bible in its true context, even through the Masoretic Hebrew context of it, because many talk about the paleo this, paleo that, but still on the basic, the basic level, what we find to be true, whether you say um, 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 yis, Yisrael, 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 or, or Yisrael, Right? There's different ways that the brother who came on the platform from, I think, the Yoruba and from Africa, right, you know, to um, give an African or rather give a black man on the continent perspective to being an Israelite. In other words, that there are those Africans, there's just a general terminology that we say American today, right? But we go a couple of hundred years ago, right? There was not an America in that sense. The continent was here. But what the white man has done in renaming places and giving names to place and changing people's names, right? And in the psychological intellectual manipulation. So this is what goes on in some arguments where some are pro-Africa, but don't want to get to where the root of this terminology. How was this terminology? Where did it come from? Is this what we called it? Is this what the people on the continent called it? And we'll clearly find out that the people on the continent, only through the past 400 years of white racism, white supremacy. So the name Africa was created, right? The name Africa was created by white supremacy, right? That's a, that's a, that's a subject right there. Was the name Africa, was the name Africa created? and implemented and imposed, that's the term, imposed, imposed by white supremacy. So, you know, we can get into this part of the history, which is the aftermath, and this shows you how that name stuck. See, if they just said, the white man said, well, we're going to call the continent Africa, right? It wouldn't, it wouldn't have stuck like that. People would have gone about and, well, they, they'll know themselves, their tribe, or how they identify the continent, so forth and so on, how they identify their country. But no, that's not what happened. We know what occurred in the Belgium, you know, the Belgium Conference or the Congo Conference. We know what the aftermath, the brutality, right? We could call it the, the, um, 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 the PTSD that was that that's even the aftermath, even hundreds of years later on, the post-traumatic right, enslavement in Slav, this Slav mentality that was imposed on the continent. And therefore, right, the people and I'm using right here, um, what's his name? Leopold. Right? We could virtually say that it's, it's Leopold and the rest of them that renamed the, the continent. They renamed the continent right in front of us. And now we're talking about black power, black liberation. And we say Africa because it is a point of reference, but we don't address how that name was even superimposed. It's like finding out that, oh, they call us Negroes and we're Negroes. And then we link Negroes as we study the terminology as they applied and say, wow, we really are Israelites. We're Hebrews. Right? And then we go on back and we now naming ourselves the, the Negro, the Negro lights or the Negro Israelites. You know what I'm saying? It's like going forward, but then carrying the backward into the forward. So until black people and pro so-called Africans, and this is especially for those who still may have to use the terminology. This still is a terminology, a nomenclature, a name that we still are in various different frontline battles with those who have, who are the um, kind of inheritors, right, 
of the injustice done to us. But this has to become, this should really be the main point right here, that the term Africa was superimposed on the continent. Right? Even if we're still using the terminology, because we still, on a certain level, might have needs to use the terminology. We have to recognize that before, was it 1884, before the 1800s, right? and we can study the maps and see a progression of this. But then when we get to the oldest use and the oldest point of reference of Africa, right? the term, the, the sound, the word sound, Africa, and the continent that is now called Africa, we find this with the Romans and the Roman Empire. It goes back to the whole Hannibal and Carthage and the Romans and Hannibal and Carthage. It goes back to that particular time, actually before that time, but that's a good point of reference in history, right? And at that particular time, right, only t Tunisia and certain parts of North Africa that was the Roman breadbasket to even show how the white so-called supremacists, the white European, white racists, how the Gentiles, biblically speaking, how the Gentiles already were even exploiting the continent then in a small way. And the small way that they exploited the continent, they called it Africa. Right. And then, right, that's like roughly, what was that? That's, that's roughly around the time of Hannibal, right? Right. The time of Hannibal is way, <laughs> right, is way early, right? But let's say, let's safely say 2,000 years ago. Let's just round it off to 2,000, within a 2,000 year period of time, right? Prior to that, right, we know that the continent was not known as Africa. We know the continent was not called Africa prior to the 1800s. But when they talk about the carving up, right, the carving up of the continent, you ever heard? The cover-up is worse than the lie. See, the cover-up is when they tell us how the continent was carved up, right? How the continent was carved up, right? They said the Belgium Conference, the race, the race, the scramble, they call it the scramble for Africa, and how the Europeans sat down, right? And the brutality that was done as part of the, you would say the aftermath of the Belgium conference. And truly we have to also discuss really the real burden is the black man's burden. You heard the lie about the white man's burden. No, it's the black man's burden. Right? Abyssinia says, or Ethiopia we can say, I sometimes wonder whether it was worth my while joining this European league. You remember the League of Gentiles, the League of Nations, right? To just show and prove for the history that we have tried it their way. Right. And what the results of their way, how far do we get in trying their way? In a sense, what does Massey do with the League of Nations, the League of Gentiles in the 1930s was similar to what the civil rights movement and then even MLK, right? Malik, Melek King, what Dr. Martin Luther King and others did, right, is test them at their own laws. Right. And they don't even hold to their own laws. Right. So, therefore, we have to, in that sense, right, through the Torah, right, <laughs> through the book, right, become that law to ourselves. But the first thing we have to do is we have to confront the lawlessness. And one of the lawlessness is when they rename you. If I can just call you any name I want to and you'll tell everybody, your mama, your papa and your friend that, well, this is who I am. What sort of power do I have? What sort of power has white supremacy and white racism exhibited and displayed by renaming the whole continent and at the very same time of renaming the whole continent and calling it Africa? Now notice what happened. Back in roughly 2,000 years ago, the Romans just had a kind of a, not even a foothold, I call it like a toehold in Tunisia, northern Africa, right next to Libya. And that's what they called Africa. That was what was known as Africa. Even from the Roman perspective, only parts of the North Africa that was nearest to Rome, Italy, was referred to as Africa. Other parts was called Libya. Other, the greater part was called Ethiopia from Romans' time because they had, so to speak, appropriated all of the Greek learning before them. Right? The Romans. So when we look at the Greco-Romans, could be the embryonic start of the so-called white supremacy, white racism. This is where it's still in, in vitro. Right? Now we get over the past 400 years is something that's fully matured and grown. Right? It's not like the Damien seed. 
right? So when we look at the white supremacy from its embryonic level, we go back to the Greco-Roman period, Alexander the Greek, the Great. But then when we want to look at that Damien, you remember in the movie Damien, when the Damien boy recognized he's a devil? That is like the 400 years ago, right? And one of the main acts of his devilishment was the renaming of the continent. And when we hear ones like Sarnetta say, well, he's trying to make a kind of a gotcha point, right? He's trying to make a kind of a gotcha point. This is interesting right here, 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 yeah. While he's making, you know, a gotcha point, right? He don't really even recognize that he done, he, he has done, gotten, got, right? This is the black man. This is the Ethiopians, right? This is the Israelites. Are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Are ye not as the children of who? The Ethiopians unto me. Right? So Ethiopian Hebrews, you know what we represent? We rep the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews. So to Sinetta's point, um, Africa and Egypt, the terms Africa and Africans and Egypt and Egyptians are not older than right, the terms Ham or Ham, Shem and Japheth or Noah. Noah is older than Egypt, Egyptian, is older than Africa, African. You say, well, how, 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 how are you going to say that? From the facts. Where do we get the terminology Egypt from? Did the ancient people you call the Egyptians, did they call themselves Egyptians? What did the ancient Egyptians call themselves? Kam, Kamet, Kemet, Chemet, Chem, Chem, Cham, Cham. That's what they call, that's what exactly what we have in Moshe's first book, right? Bereshis. Right? How about this term Africa, Africans? How come we don't find Africa, African in the Bible? Where does this term Africa, African come from? Let's be honest. Where does it come from? And when does it come from wherever it comes from? Right? We have proven and will prove again right, that the term, see, people who uphold that, whether they know it, right, they don't really know anything about the black man's burden. Right? And if you're talking about black power and black liberation and black consciousness, you need to recognize the black man's burden. Right? And sadly, you know, there's many of our people, even like the Sardinettes, that still is kind of in this kind of almost like a twilight zone. He, he knows there's some truth in the Bible perspective. That's why he likes the One West and his captain, Captain Tazaria. But he's trying to reconcile that. Right? And when he asks these sort of questions, this is what the white man, this is the white man's vision. Right, from Cairo to the Cape, right, from Cairo to the Cape. This is how he looks at right us and what is ours, right? And it shows you why this is so very, very important to him and always has been right very, very important to him. Right. So when we start to put these things here, just as like a little brief perspective, right? And this is all now post. This is after. 1884, 1886, right? This is after, and what the Cecil Rose, the ultimate so-called white racist pseudo-imperialist, he says, if I could, I would claim other planets. See, planets, but the earth is a plane. He was a fool, and like the old timers said, one fool makes many, right? But here, 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 let's get to the root right here. Let's scroll down here. So once again, Africa, Right, the terminology Africa, Africa, African, right? Which one is older? Ham, 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 Ham is older than Egypt, Egyptian. Ham, the biblical Ham, Ham is older than the terminology Africa and African. Both of these terminologies, terminology Egypt from Hikapita, Gipta, Gipta, Hikipta. Het kapita, Egypta, 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 Egypt, Egypt. That's where it comes from, the Het kapita. It comes from one of the cities or we could say like one of the city states, the main cities, right? Some say Memphis, right? The Het kapita, right? And when the Greeks heard that, Het kapita, Egypta, Egypta, they came with Egypta from Het kapita, from the Het kapita, Egypta, Egypta, they came up and they heard Egypt. From the Ethiopians, Tob and Tobia, right? That indigenous Afro, Asiatic, Afro Semitic terminology, they came up with Ethiopis in their understanding, burnt faces, right? Or shining, really more shining faces, burnt faces from Tobia, which means that God is good, 
You know, as Tobia means that Ja is good, right? Has as its roots the good because that consonant was the good land. This is something that the European instinctively, right, from his going to and fro, right, up and down in the earth is something he instinctively knew, right? And he knew that was the prize. As you see the finger being pointed on this particular, I know that's Bismarck or whoever, he's pointing to Africa. And you can see right here where he has a knife in his hand and he's ready to slice and dice. At the very same time, there was a scramble for Africa and they drew these artificial borders and they divided Africa among the white pseudo anti-Christian European powers because they were antichrist for sure. They even whitewashed the image of our black Lord and Savior, right? So we can tell, we, know, we should know who we're dealing with here, right? And here's the point, that the terminology Africa came into full effect after and at the same time. It's almost like where, you know, they throw a rock, but they hide their hands. They, in a sense, pulled out the knife to cut up Africa, but they hid their hand of superimposing the name Africa. So from that very time, so it's like from that trauma, what do you call it? Trauma-based mind control. From the trauma-based mind control of those events of the Congo conference, that, that was the other name of the Belgium conference, and all the atrocities that were done, it caused this name Africa out of trauma to stick to us. So even to this day, like the Sarnettas, you know, he said, um, you know, because Egypt and Egypt and Africa is older than Ham, buddy. How old is such such buddy? Well, how old is Africa? How old is the planet, buddy? You're going to rely on some European to say billions of billions of trillions of billions of years old. Right. We need to kind of back up on that as so-called black conscious people. Right. Because for, for the most part, we are still guessing or taking white people's guesses while we try to talk about black power and black pride. Right. So if we want to put into a logical context, right, the terminology in Moshe's Moses first book, right, Bereshis of Ham, right, of Ham, right, Cam. Kam is older than Egypt and Africa, the terms combined, and both terms, Egypt and Africa, we have gotten from and through the white man. They do not even line up. The terminology Egypt and terminology Africa does not even line up with the ancient witness or the ancient witnesses. We can go back to ancient Egypt. Shall we go back to ancient Egypt? And look at what the ancient Egyptians call them. Why are you running around talking about Kemet, 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 Kem, Kam, Kem, Kam, Kam, Kam? That's because the white men also took from the lost sheep over here in the Americas and the Caribbean our language, the linguistics, right? So it's like whatever word the white man calls it, we're speaking the white man's language, right? We are relying and deep ending on his scientific, his scientific interpretations or his, yeah, his interpretations, his opinions, Right? So it's that question that, that, you know, the brethren was asked, like, well, which one is older? Right? Let's go back here, right here. Brother's making a good point. See, see, and the brother, he, he takes a good pause to think about what to say. How old is Ham? How old is Ham? He, he, he takes a pause. So here, 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 just then looking at um, a kind of an update comparison from Seti's tomb right here of some of the ancient, some would say races or the different seeds, different seeds here. So here we have the, the native um, Egyptians, how the Egyptians portray themselves. This is this is one likeness right here. I think this is probably a Aswan or Nubian, uh, not Nubian, but the Aswan, the indigenous. They like in the south. You don't find them in the cities that have been taken over by the the Greek, Roman, um, Arab, Hittite, Canaanite, Ottoman, Turkish conquerors of today. Those like um, Zahi Hawass, the blasphemer of so-called ancient Kemetic people in his pseudo-Egyptology would seek to deny, right? And then we also have the Tanesi, or like the Nubians, some say maybe the Neolithic Africans, quote-unquote, but the other people, the constant, more also also of that Ham, Ham stock right here. Here, right here, here on this side, we have more of the, you could say the Hebrew, 
right? The more of the Hebrew type right here. This is interesting right here. We have to touch more on the Hebrew type, right? Or some say the Amo. They call the Amo. What's interesting is that Amo, Amo, we have this also in the Hebrew, Amo, right? Amo Yisrael, the people of Israel. Amo Yisrael. Now, some say that culturally, and even through the fact of the land of Canaan, there's some Canaanite. A lot of ones like to refer to these people as the Canaanite people. But the ones on the Stellas, the Steelers here, is the ones that they are more familiar with in the sense of the Hebrew type. We can tell on the clearer representation, the fringes, the fringes, right? Also the full beard. If you notice the full beard, the precepts, also the hair. We could say even the locks, the hair, and the woolly, the woolly hair factor. That's why we have this likeness of his imperial majesty. And also the fact that amongst our people, we have various or melanated black peoples because all the world was basically, in the beginning, we say black people. But in the black seed, we have the most potential diversity, right? So when we say coming from one, right? And then we have, some would say the um, Tamahu. Some call these people the Tamahu people. Some refer to them as the Libyan people. Now, these are more the Canaanitish people proper because their relation, right, with the other Canaanite people. If you notice Egypt, ancient Mitzrayim, right, on the two sides. On one side was the Levant, also called Palestine, and on the other side was Libya. But we'll touch on a little bit more of that right here. Here, here this vlog is to state that Ham a.k.a. Kam or Kem, but in the Hebrew, in the KJV, King James translation, says Ham. What we have in Moshe's first book, there are dates. There are dates. That's what the brother said that, you know, he can, we can find out the date, right? If we will look at the date, right? And see, this is now even pointing to the whole chronology, right, of time. Even in ancient Egypt, scholars or those who really study it know that there are various, there's, a, there's broken timelines. What they do is kind of present a summary, right, from the modern to roughly the ancient past. But when you get into the details, we find that there are broken timelines, right, and how the time was accounted in different periods in ancient Egypt. What, what people don't really understand is that the Bible actually helps the scholars and the archaeologists, right, to, in a sense, quote, divine time, divine time, and even helps them to correct time. It's actually the Bible that is one of the most significant um, documents in research or archaeology. The problem is that many different scientists, scholars, archaeologists, different ones, some are influenced by their Western Gentile whitewashed Christianity. They're influenced by the little narratives that they learned in Sunday Bible school, whether they are Catholic or Protestant. But what they don't recognize is the superimposition of white racism and white supremacist ideology even in their growing up, you know, as a good Catholic or good Christian. So amongst a lot of the scholars, when they now go into scholarship areas like ancient history and it begins to touch on certain biblical theme, this is what, where the confusions come in. Because a lot of times they, out of a knee-jerk reaction, are trying to so-called defend God or defend the Bible or defend the translation or something like that. And this is where things get mixed up. But the more objective scholars and the more objective and even the institutional academic scholarship actually highly values the Bible. So when you see these articles saying that, oh, scientists prove the Bible is wrong here, such as that, those are hype things. That, those are bait things. Those are like click bait to get you to check it out, right? But that, even when you get into the, many of those articles, right, that come out from so-called more or less objective institutions and the academics, they basically say that, well, the idea that is associated with the Bible here, whatever the prevailing narrative that may have already been in effect, you know, like when they try to say that, well, Ham is the black man. And so Noah had three sons. One was black, one was white, and one was gray. These are the, this, these are the idiocies, right, that still linger and have not been pushed aside to recognize the more objective fact that Noah, Noah is what we can call a black man, a man of color, and his sons were as well. Right? And we can tell from the particular regions of the world, we can map out where his descendants went. 
right? And as we study linguistics, as we study maps, well, the first thing we need to do is not be fooled by the word games and the name games. So Egypt, the term Egypt and the term Africa, the term Egyptian and the term African is a name game that when we start to go into ancient archaeology, there's a disconnect because the term Egypt came in from the time of the Greeks, roughly around the last maybe 300-ish BC, right? And the term Africa, right, was first used by the Romans roughly, say, 2,000 years ago. And the term Africa and Africans was only imposed on the whole continent and the peoples belonging or having a point of reference there too since the Belgium Conference of the 1800s. This is when the name Africa begins to fit. And part of what caused it to fit, and this is why many ones are going to have fits when they really get the point that we're making here. Because they say, what, we can't call ourselves African? But we're African. And we talk about Africa United and Mama Africa and we're Africans because you have to recognize how the terminology even came down to us as that. But as we begin to honestly and objectively and genuinely research it, we have to recognize that its whole origin, its point of origin comes from and through the so-called white man, the so-called European. So with that, we seal up here. Shalom Habarim. Like, share, and subscribe. Check out our live streaming the evenings, Rastafari Israelites, the YouTube channel. Also check us out on LOJS.org. Send a comment or a link at LOJS, the contact at LOJS.org for the Lion of Judah Society. Yes, I, Rastafari. Shalom Habarim. Shalom.